Listen to stories, appreciate idioms. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Encounter Chinese, Encountering Idioms. Today, the idiom we are going to encounter is 大材小用. Let's break it down and read it slowly. 大材小用 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 Da means great. 才 means talent. 小 means downgrade. 用 means use or utilize. The literal meaning of 大材小用 is to assign a small role to a person with great ability. Nowadays, it is used metaphorically to describe a situation where highly talented individuals are confined to insignificant positions, unable to fully utilize their intelligence and potential. It also refers to improper personnel arrangements that lead to wasting talents. The idiom 大材小用 originated from a poem by the Song Dynasty poet Lu Yu, titled, The original text states, 大材小用古所叹,管仲萧何时留亚. The meaning of this phrase is that in ancient times, people often lamented the practice of underutilizing individuals with great talent. Figures such as Guan Zhong and Xiao He were only assigned to minor positions, failing to receive the appropriate recognition and opportunities to demonstrate their capabilities. The story behind this poem is as follows. During the Southern Song Dynasty, there was a renowned patriotic poet named Xin Qiji. When Xin Qiji was very young, his father passed away, and he was raised by his grandfather. In his youth, Xin Qiji studied under the famous pastoral poet Lu Zhan. He was intelligent and eager to learn, and he became Lu Zhan's most accomplished student, along with his classmate, Dang Huaying. One day, Lu Zhan asked both of them about their aspirations, saying, Confucius once asked his students about their ambitions, so I'm curious about what you two plan to do in the future. Dang Huaying quickly responded, I study to become an official, to achieve fame and glory, and bring honor to my ancestors. I am determined to serve in the imperial court. If I fail to become an official, I will retire to the countryside and become a pastoral poet like our teacher. Lu Shan was delighted and nodded in approval, considering Dang Huaying's ambition noble. Then, Lu Shan turned to Xin Qiji and asked for his response. Xin Qiji replied, I don't want to become an official. I only want to use my pen to expose all the treacherous individuals in the world and use my sword to eliminate them. Lu Shan was astonished and advised Xin Qiji not to speak such absurd words in the future. From then on, the paths of Xin Qiji and Dang Huaying diverged significantly. Xin Qiji bravely joined the resistance against the Jin dynasty on the battlefield, earning fame as a patriotic poet. On the other hand, Dang Huaying mingled with the ruling Jin regime, even engaging in activities that aided the Jin dynasty. Later, the Jin dynasty launched an invasion against the southern Song lands. Xin Qiji organized an army of over 2,000 people and initiated an uprising in his hometown. Subsequently, he led his forces to join the peasant leader Ging Jing in the rebellion and formed an insurgent army. The rebel forces, appointed by the imperial court, cooperated with the regular army to fight against the invading Jin forces. 
However, due to betrayal and persecution by surrendering factions, Shin Chiji was forced to live in seclusion in the Jiangxi region for a long time. It was not until the spring of 1203, when Shin Chiji was 64 years old, that he was appointed as the governor of Shaoxing Prefecture and the pacification commissioner of Zhejiang East Circuit. There was a place in the western suburbs of Shaoxing called Sanshan, where the renowned patriotic poet Liu Yu lived. Liu Yu was 15 years older than Shin Chiji and was nearing the age of 80. Shin Chiji greatly admired and respected Liu Yu's patriotic poetry, so shortly after Shin Chiji took office, he paid a visit to this esteemed senior poet. The two of them discussed national affairs, and their viewpoints were remarkably similar, leaving them with a sense of regret for not meeting sooner. Upon hearing Shin Chiji's analysis of the situation and his vision for unifying the country, Liu Yu recognized him as a talented individual and hoped for his success in future endeavors. In the following spring, Emperor Ningzong of the Song Dynasty issued a decree summoning Shin Chiji to the capital city of Linan. Emperor Ningzong also sought Shin Chiji's opinion on launching a northern campaign against the Jin Dynasty. Shin Chiji shared this news with Liu Yu, who saw it as an excellent opportunity for Shin Chiji to demonstrate his abilities and was genuinely pleased for him. To encourage Shin Chiji to fully utilize his talents, Liu composed a lengthy poem as a gift for him. The poem stated, Shin Chiji is like the historical figures Guan Zhong and Xiao He, renowned politicians and military strategists. It's a pity that such a great talent has been appointed to a minor position as the pacification commissioner of Zhejiang East Circuit. Furthermore, Liu Yu encouraged Shin Chiji to strive for the restoration of the Central Plains and not lose faith due to being overlooked and undervalued. Unfortunately, despite Liu Yu's encouragement, Shin Chiji did not receive significant recognition from the imperial court even at the age of 66. This patriotic hero and esteemed poet, who was relegated to minor roles, passed away with deep sorrow and resentment. In this story, Liu Yu used the phrase da cai xiao yu, to describe Shin Chiji, emphasizing that he was not given the prominent position he deserved. Liu Yu hoped Shin Chiji would not lose hope and urged him to continue his efforts for the country. There is another story from the biography of Bian Rang in the later Han Dynasty, written by Fan Yi during the Song Dynasty. The original text states, This sentence means that the capabilities, talents, and magnanimity of a great individual are not suitable for certain small occasions or trivial matters because these small matters cannot fully utilize the potential of a great person. The story goes as follows. It is said that during the late Eastern Han Dynasty, there was a scholar named Bian Rang residing in Kaifeng, Hunan province. Even at a young age, he possessed eloquence and debating skills, as well as extensive knowledge. His fame grew even more after he wrote the renowned Zhang Hua Fu. At that time, Emperor Ling of the Han Dynasty, Lu Hong, was preparing to elevate his concubine, consort her, to the position of empress. Therefore, he entrusted her older half-brother, Ha Jin, and appointed him as the Grand General. Upon hearing of Bian Rang's talent and reputation that had spread throughout the country, Ha Jin wished to recruit him for official duties. However, he worried that Bian Rang might refuse, which would cause him to lose face. 
So, under the pretense of enlisting soldiers, Hajin summoned Bian Rang to Luoyang and granted him a minor official position. Thinking he was clever, Hajin believed that he had handled the situation perfectly. However, his actions received disapproval from Tsai Yong, a prominent scholar, poet, and calligrapher of that time. Tsai Yong expressed his dissatisfaction with He Jin, saying, Bian Rang had a difficult childhood, but he is intelligent and studious. He has extensively studied the classics of various schools, effortlessly grasping their profound meanings. Moreover, he is skilled in reasoning and innovation. His character is pure, adhering to the principles of propriety. Such individuals are extremely rare. It is like using a large cauldron, meant for steaming a whole cow, to cook a small chicken. It is entirely unsuitable and results in the need for excessive water, resulting in a tasteless broth. Granting Bian Rang a minor official position is like using a large cauldron to cook a small chicken. I hope the Grand General can provide Bian Rang an opportunity to fully display his talents. Ha Jin found Sai Yang's words to be reasonable, so he appointed Bian Rang as the governor of Jiujing, a high-ranking position. However, at that time, the court was already engulfed in chaos. Bian Rang, having recently taken office, felt that serving in such an environment contradicted his principles. He decided to resign from his official position and returned home to focus on his studies. Yet, how could a talented individual remain indifferent to society? Bian Rang held a strong disdain for the rising warlord, Chao Chao, and frequently criticized him on various occasions. Some individuals, upon hearing this, reported the matter to Chao Chao. As Chao Chao was at the peak of his power, he could not tolerate Bian Rang's insults. Ultimately, Chao Chao secretly arranged for a local official to capture and execute Bian Rang. Two stories have been told. Next, let's review the idiom we encountered today. Da, cai, xiao, yu. Da, cai, xiao, yu. Finally, let's use Da, cai, xiao, yu to make a sentence. 他原来是将军，现在竟然做了传令兵，真是大材小用。他原来是将军，现在竟然做了传令兵，真是大材小用。That's all for today's encountering idioms. If you like it, please like and subscribe. See you next time.